So what are we doing here today? Well, we're going to make some changes to a very popular application, the sample application. Hopefully everybody here is familiar with that one. If not, it's really easy to install in your workspace so you can repeat what we do here another time. For those of you attending today to really escape work, my apologies to you, but that's exactly what we'll be doing here. We're going to review some specifications and implement them using dynamic actions. Along the way, we'll run into some limitations of dynamic actions, and we'll learn to bridge the gap between what we can do and what we want to do, utilizing our knowledge of these related technologies. Let's get started. First specification, the application should disable the alternate phone field until the phone number field is filled in. What are they asking for here? Let's take a look. I'm now in my workspace and I have a copy of the sample application right here. I've actually just created that. It's a press copy. I've not made any changes to it. We'll go ahead and run it. Here we are, standard sample app. And they said alternate phone field, phone field must be talking about customers, right? We'll drill into the customer form. Ah, here we are, phone number and alternate phone number. So what are they asking for? Um, basically, if the phone number field is cleared out, they don't want this field, the alternate phone field, to be accessible, which as you can see it is currently. They're basically saying, you know, the alternate phone field should only be populated once the phone number field has been populated, which makes sense, simple enough. So how would we go about implementing something like this using dynamic actions? You need to ask yourself a series of questions, starting with the driver. What is the driver in this case? If you're thinking the phone number field, you'd be correct. And more specifically, the driver would be if the phone number field is null or not null, depending on how you look at it. Once you've answered that question, you have your when. In this case, when the phone number field is not null. Next question. What should happen if that's true? Well, in this case, the phone number field is not null. That means it has a value, so we want to enable the alternate phone number field. Simple enough. And of course, then the follow-up question to that would be, what would happen if that is false? Well, it'd be the exact opposite, right? We would then want to disable the alternate phone field. Let's take a look at how we could do this with dynamic actions. So I'm going to go to edit the page. And I'm using the new tree view. Hopefully everyone here has begun doing the same. Very powerful view. We have two ways to start the dynamic action. We can go right to the driver, which we've decided is the phone number field as opposed to the alternate phone field. If we right click, we can come down to create dynamic action here. And another way to do this would be to go to the bottom of the tree where you'll see dynamic actions here. We can right click that and create here as well. The difference between the two is minimal. Basically, if we start with the driver, it will fill in a few fields for us. So it's worth doing that if possible. So we'll go to create the dynamic action. And immediately, we run into a fork in the road. You have to make a decision here, standard or advanced. Most people are a little bit worried about advanced. What is that? What can it do? that I don't know about. Well, the truth is that both standard and advanced are the same. It's just that when you choose standard, some basic decisions are made for you, and a lot of the options you have available are limited. Standard works when the when we talked about before is change. Um, so if you remember back, actually, let me take you there, we said when the phone number field is not null. In this case, that when is changed, so standard works. Standard also means that the actions you can do must either be hide and show or enable and disable. And again, if we look at our 
actions, they are enable and disable. So we can use standard here. So we'll select that. We need to give it a name. This is the phone number field is populated. I recommend that you choose a name based on your driver. OK, we're now at the when. And we've thought this through, so this shouldn't be terribly hard. What did we say? When the phone number field already selected is not null. We can select that here. So our when is good. We'll go next. And now we're deciding what actions we want to take. Again, the standard just work with the basics, show and hide, enable, disable. So when it's not null, in other words, the phone number field has a value, then we want to enable the alternate phone number field. Now, that also means we want to disable it uh, if that's not true, or create the opposite false action, which is checked for us automatically, so we're good to go. We'll click Next to continue. And here we have to select which item we want to enable or disable. And of course, that's the alternate phone or phone number two. We'll click Create. And once we're done, you can scroll down in the tree view, drill into your item. You'll see your dynamic action here. And go even further and see your true and false actions here. And you'll see the dynamic action at the bottom as well. Let's run the page and see if it's working. OK, currently, the phone number field is populated. As we would expect, I can easily get into the alternate phone field. But if I take this value and clear it out, ah, it's now disabled. I can't get into it. So it is, in fact, working. But what actually happened here? And it's kind of hard to tell just by looking, right? So let's take a look using some tools. Bring this into view. And I'm actually going to populate this so I can get into the alternate phone field. I'm going to right click. I'll go to inspect the element. And let's see here. So here's the input. We see it has several attributes. One of those is class. Notice that class does not have a value. And also notice that you do not see an attribute of disabled. OK, so this is what you get for the input when it is enabled. In other words, I can type in it. Okay. But let me clear this out. And now it's disabled. So what happened here? Let's take a look. We'll go to inspect the element next to it. Since this one is disabled, I can't drill into it uh, right now. So I'll go next to it, and then we'll just come down a little bit. Here we are. So notice, now it has a class. It's Apex Disabled. And additionally, all the way to the right here, we see a disabled attribute. So that's what happened. It added a class and an additional disabled attribute. OK, so what do these do? Well, the class is added so that you really know it's disabled. If you look to the top here, while I remove this class, you'll see the change. Oh, so it made the background a little bit darker, a little bit more obvious that that particular element was not usable. Okay, And of course, the disabled attribute here, if I remove that, we're then able to get in and modify the field. So that's what the dynamic action did. And we didn't have to write a single line of code to do it. But no, I'm not bitter about that. This is good.